Kyle Bratch, I'm a chef on Motorsports here with Paul Weber from Climb. Now Paul is in charge of sourcing all of the materials that goes into making the super technical gear that Climb is known for. Now Paul, you're going to talk to us today about base layers and kind of what makes Climb garments so great, right? You bet. Yo, know, what I want to talk about is just kind of the building blocks. You know, everything takes a system. You know, you have to have the proper components to to get the race bike to work or to get your clothing to work. So what we're gonna talk about is a little bit of the system to get the proper cooling. One of the things we've been working on, especially for you know hot temperatures when you're out in the greatest, you know, the most adventurous places in the world, sometimes it's so hot that you you just get uh, you get fatigued. The reality is we've done a lot of studies, actually NASA did some studies about heat deprivation and what happens to you. They've proven that with every five degrees of heat it, uh, changes, they did it with some operators in the 70s, again in the 80s, where they proved that your mistakes went up by 50%. What? It's a huge... So every five degrees hundred. above 80 degrees, you're, you have a greater chance for making mistakes. So the reality is the cooler you can keep yourself and the more comfortable you can keep yourself, the less chance you have of making a mistake. And on a motorcycle, it's probably okay to make one mistake, but once you make two or three in a short amount of time, catastrophic things can happen. So I'm just gonna start off with this really simple base layer. I want you to just put your finger in there, Kyle, to see. Uh, it's pretty hot. Yeah, it's pretty hot. Oh. So I'm just gonna put this base layer fabric in there just to get a little bit wet. And then I'm gonna show you what the idea is, is the smaller we can make this fiber, and then if we can get air to go through that fiber, problem with this test, is you have to do it yourself to like feel like what the heck is going on. So feel that fabric now. Whoa. And <laughs> that feels like it just came out of the refrigerator. And and so the flatter and smaller you can make the fiber, the cooler you can make it. The more air you put it through it, virtually it's just drying off the Dude, faster and faster. I mean it's not so, like it came to room temperature. Right. Like this feels like it came out of the refrigerator. Exactly. And this water's freaking hot. Yeah. That's so crazy. It is it you know and it makes a big difference. So the study we've done, this the just our base layer, we can make about a one to one and a half, almost two degree difference in your body temperature. In the core temperature of your body? Well shooting it with a just a, a heat gun. <sighs> Uh, so it makes a difference and then the reality is that we're working on some actually fibers where we're going to have some sacrificial resins so what that means is we'll be able to make a fiber that's one-fifth the size of a silk strand and so what that allows to do is have even more cooling so the the goal is is to never be satisfied with where you're at because our customers are taking their their sport and their activities to a place they've never been before and so we have to continue to push the envelope and so that's just the goal is to always be pushing to see what we can find next so this is the cooling effect. Yeah. Now on the opposite side of the spectrum, you guys are also known for the gear that keeps you warmer right. in colder climates. So you've got yep. a 1.0, a 2.0, and a 3.0. How does that technology work? You know, the reality is it's all about trapping, making a microclimate next to your body underneath the Gore-Tex. So if you can create a space and have a thermal change, then you can create heat. Interesting. The reality is the base layer has a huge effect, even more so than like a fence layer or something like that. And the reality is, is when you're traveling at a high rate of speed, if you have a very poofy type insulation, mm -hmm. it'll compress and so you lose your insulation value. So what we've done is comfort mapping as far as the body goes, the one, two, and three allows you to have the greatest amount of insulation. And one of the things that's kind of been fun from a sourcing standpoint is we've been able to now move our production from overseas back to the Central oh, America fun. region. So what that really means is we are now able to put 28% of the duty that we used to pay or 32% of the duty into oh, the wow. materials. So when you fill the base layers of what you're using now in the one, two, and three, it is significantly better performance. It's better than anything we've ever had before. Nice. I'm super excited. So if you're not familiar, the way climb works is, is you purchase your overshell, your outer layer that has yep. your abrasion resistance and it has your impact protection in it. You then source your own either cooling gear or gear that's going to make you warmer at that base layer level. That way you can customize the way that your jacket feels and works. For example, I mean, I live in Southern California, so the amount of heat that I would even need in the wintertime is minimal. Like a 1.0 is perfect for me, but when you're in a snowy climate or something, that, you know, a place that gets down below 30 degrees, you can up the ante there. You can get a 2.0 or 3.0 and ensure that that protective garment on the outside is going to keep you warm. Conversely, the same thing happens in the cooling. So if you were to wear that jacket with the vents open, you're gonna have a cooling effect. But if you put one of these negative 1.0 base layers on, you're gonna stay extremely cool. And I'm excited. We're gonna go out and hit the trails tomorrow. We're gonna hammer some of the epic single track that we have up here. 
And uh, those videos, we hope, are gonna be amazing. And we're gonna be bringing this product. So we're gonna give you real life product reviews in the field, telling you how this stuff works and why you need it on your body for your ride. Well, Paul, thank you so much for walking us through this really cool technical, <laughs> technical piece of material here. Now, stay tuned for our other videos that we have about the other technical aspects of climb. We're gonna talk about Gore-Tex, we're gonna talk about D3O, we're gonna talk about Poron, and some of the things that you can do to further protect yourself when you're out there on the ride. Not only keeping yourself comfortable, but also protected. I'm Kyle from Chaparral Motorsports. Please like and subscribe to these videos if you want to see more of this action coming your way. Until next time, take care and ride safe.